What's up everybody and happy new year, happy 2021. I hope your uh, new year is already going great and uh, is better than 2020. Uh, we did the uh, closeout video for 2020 on the uh, live edition of Mondays with Mover a couple days ago. So I thought what better way to start uh, 2021 and kick off the new year than with a mover mailbag. So today uh, we're gonna take a look at your letters and emails and answer some of your questions and uh, hopefully start out the new year right. So let's get started. Three, two, one, fight off. The first one uh, is from Presley in Kentucky. This is a letter. It is folded. It is. Make them tell you no. That. Pretty cool. And it says, Dear Mover, thank you so much for all the informational videos and for the Facebook group. I'm a freshman in high school and I'm wanting to become an Air Force Reserve or Air National Guard fighter pilot. I never thought I had what it took to become a fighter until I found your channel. Your videos are extremely motivated. I was wondering if you could maybe do a video with a female fighter pilot. I'm interested in hearing about a woman's experience in this career. Maybe even a Q&A. Again, thank you so much for the motivation information. Sincerely, Presley. That is an awesome idea and uh, something that I'm working towards um, doing. So absolutely, that will happen. And thank you so much, Presley, for this. This is awesome. This is just really cool. Good job. So uh, thank you. We'll definitely try to get a, a woman's perspective because uh, I, I do agree. I think that, you know, uh, that would be a great interview. All right, this comes from Charles. And it is a Christmas card. I must be late. Uh, may your holidays be filled with timeless memories and the peace of a hopeful future. God bless and Merry Christmas, Mover, Sniper, and Kaiser. Well, how you doing? Awesome, thank you. And F-16 patch, which is awesome. Is this guy Benbrook, Texas? Uh, I wonder if he works for Lockmark. And an F-35 patch. Very cool. And this says, Dear Mover, my name is Charles and I recently came across your YouTube channel. I made sure to subscribe and always look forward to your video updates. I wanted to send you a couple of patches from work as a small token of appreciation for your service and protecting my freedom. I'll try to get you a couple more goodies when we can get them restocked. Thanks for all you do, have done, and will continue to do. God bless and Merry Christmas, Charles. Well, thank you. Uh, and if you're working on these two aircraft, thank you because you're doing a great job and I appreciate it. So awesome, awesome stuff. Thanks, Charles. All right, this comes from Yellow Dog Adventures World Headquarters, California. All right, this says, as a former F-16 weapons guy, Shaw from 84 to 89, I just wanted to say I love your channel. Keep up the good work. Stay safe. Regards, Gary. And it's a Yellow Dog Adventures sticker. So I'll have to check that out. My little blurring tool, tool is blurring. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah, I have to check that out. Thanks, Gary. And the last uh, physical piece of mail. We'll get some uh, actual letters. This comes from Grant. Let's read the card first. You always read the card first, right? That's the etiquette. And Grant says, Merry Christmas, Mover. This might be getting to you after December 25th, so Happy New Year as well. As someone who loves things that go fast in writing, I'm super grateful for all the work you've put into your channel and books. Since you're both an Air Force and Navy guy, it seemed only fitting to include a gift featuring both services. The Hornet is hand-painted, so it's by no means the best out there, but it just seemed right to paint it like the River Rattlers you flew with. The knife is for all your survival needs or opening boxes I'll let you choose. Thanks again for your inspiring work and for just being a good person. Can't wait for what comes next. But in the meantime, stay safe out there. Say hi to Kaiser and Sniper for me. Happy holidays, Grant. P.S. We ought to see a DCS Tomcat video with you and Gonky as pilot in Rio. Just an idea. Yeah. Talk Gonky into being my Rio. So check this out. Oh, look at that. Look at that. 
Cool. That is great. You did a great job with this. Awesome. It's got a little stand and everything. Oh, there we go. Go anywhere now. Put behind my little Corvette. Awesome. Thank you so much, Grant. And a knife. Let's see what the knife. Woo. Oh, it says Air Force. Dude, holy crap. It's got a seatbelt cutter and a um, window. That is awesome. Look, it says Air Force on it. Don't blur it. There you go. Wow. 440 stainless steel. Dude. That is awesome. Thanks so much, Grant. Good job. I mean, I appreciate it. Pretty badass. It's got a little F-35. Or is that an F-22? I can never tell from the top view, but... Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much. That was cool. All right, let's take a look at some of your emails. All right, Steve says, CW, I have a question. I thought you might be well-placed to advise on. I'm originally from Ireland via the UK, and my father was in the RAF for 30 years. As a teen, I got to fly in ride-along type flights in the Hawker Hunter, Phantom 2, and Tornado. Wow. As all of my friends were pilots in the RAF, IAF, and USAF base in the UK. My daughter is 15 and is keen on finding a way in a modern fighter ride-along flight. I look for options of this, but can, but can find nothing in the western North Carolina area. We semi-regularly get buzzed by low-flying aircraft jets on training over the North Carolina mountains where we live. I'm not sure where they come from. In the UK and France, it's not impossible, especially with family connections. But I have no idea how this might work stateside. Any advice on the best way of making this a reality? Uh, best of luck for 2021. What could possibly go wrong? That is awesome. That, that, that's not going to happen in... Um, United States. I mean, wow, that is, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's cool. I'm glad that that, that happened, but in 2021 family members and a 15 year old, um, are not going to ride in jets. Now the way incentive, so there's two types of, of flights and people ask this a lot incentive flights. And those are dedicated flights where it's their ride. So we'll go in a two seater, uh, like F 16. I used to do a whole bunch of incentive flights and it's a dedicated profile for that person. Um, so like at Homestead, we used to go take off, do an unrestricted climb, go do a low level, fly to one of the warning areas, do a supersonic run and then pull nine G's and do some aerobatics and then come back. Um, those are specifically for, uh, award winners. So, um, main, maintainer, um, types usually, but, uh, any, uh, enlisted usually, or officer that won some kind of award quarterly award or something like that is what we would do. Um, I don't know if civilians would get it, but the problem is you typically need to be on some kind of military status to go do it. However, we do incentive flights for media, um, and, um, famous people and sometimes politicians, like we did one for, um, Congressman Steve Scalise when I was, uh, at VFA 204, the river rattlers, he got a ride in F-18, but typically no amount of connections will get you a ride because there's a whole lot of paperwork that has to be done. There's a whole lot of red tape. There's a lot of bureaucracy. It's not just hop in and go. The other side is what's called familiarization flights. We call them fan flights, and those are part of the mission. So it's usually someone that, um, as, so as a not to interfere basis, they ride in the back. Usually that means they have an altitude chamber card or they get a waiver, uh, so they don't need one. They just get the short training. They don't actually have to have the card. Um, and we go do a normal flight. So it's not a dedicated ride. They just hop in the back seat and we're already doing stuff. Uh, for fighters, that's a little bit more challenging because of all the classified stuff. They have to have a security clearance for like the T-38. It's typically ROTC cadets, um, people that uh, have won awards. It's a very similar thing. 
But in general, uh, I have never heard of just a family member uh, getting that. I just, I don't think it's, it's possible here now. Now, if she were to join ROTC and, you know, in the summertime when they go, you know, do summer stuff and come to the squadron and, and help out, possibly. Um, I've flown with a lot of ROTC cadets that way. But just in general, um, if you're not a celebrity or politician or something else as a civilian, it's just not very likely. But there are ways you can pay for the rides. Uh, there's a couple jet places around the world that'll actually take you for a flight. Uh, there's like a MIG flight, L-39 flight, all that stuff. You can Google it. There's all kind of stuff like that. But sorry, uh, I wish I had a better answer, but unfortunately that's just uh, reality uh, these days. All right, this comes from Jeff. Uh, Jeff says, hey, Mover, first I want to say I'm officially a huge fan of your books. I've always enjoyed political espionage and Tom Clancy is my all-time favorite. Then I got into Mitch Rapp series by Vince Flynn. I like Mitch Rapp. Very good. I stumbled across your channel on YouTube, had to try out your book. I am the sheepdog. In addition to being a National Guard MP, I'm also in law enforcement for NASA. I know it sounds weird, but it's real. Couldn't put it down. So my wife got me Spectre Rising again. I couldn't put it down. Congrats on the great books. I hope you keep writing. Anyway, my question is, how would I go about requesting a ride along in a military aircraft? It's one of the last things on my bucket list. I know the Thunderbirds and Blue Angels only do them for the media and celebrities, but how do operational squadrons do them? I appreciate your time. Yep, yeah, see my the, that previous uh, question that was just answered, but uh, thank you for reading. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the books. I'm sorry I don't have a, a better answer. Uh, if you're in the guard, though, um, you've got a better shot. So if you get like Airman of the Quarter or uh, NCO of the Quarter or NCO of the Year or something, that if your guard unit has that, that's the way you do it. But it'd have to be with your guard unit, not somebody else's. So uh, that's a tough one. All right, this comes from Ben. Which path to service has the most pilot billets? Hi, CW. I love your videos and the make them tell you no mentality. I'm in high school and working towards my private pilot's license. I plan to join the Navy to try and become a naval aviator. And I was wondering which active duty route has the most pilot billets. Also, I'm making a club to try and raise funds for Folds of Honor. I'm doing this because I hope to be a better person in my community and also to help wounded veterans. However, I was wondering if this would help my chances of getting into the Academy and ROTC scholarship. Thanks, Benjamin. Um, okay, if you're trying to get, are you talking Navy or Air Force? I don't know the numbers. That's what I'll say. I don't know the numbers. Um, my advice is always just to apply to both and pick one. You know, it's better to have options than not. If you're looking to get into the Academy or ROTC, I think the Academy, your chances are about the same, whether you go Air Force or uh, Navy. Uh, ROTC, I think either way. Uh, the only thing about the Air Force is you've got more options because you can go Academy, you can go ROTC, you can go OTS, you can go Guard or Reserve. The Navy, you've got the Academy, ROTC, and OCS, and that's pretty much it. Um, as far as options to get a pilot slot. But uh, as far as your question on Folds of Honor, first of all, I think it's awesome that you're doing that. Uh, Folds of Honor is a great cause that I highly support. But um, it, you just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. I, I liked your first reason because you want to help um, trying to use it for resume fodder. I don't know. Um, I think it will help. I mean, volunteer stuff, anything you can put on your resume that shows that you're active in the community and trying to help others will absolutely help. Just make sure your motives are pure and not just trying to, to beef up your resume. But yeah, I think it would help. And also not just volunteering to do that, but you know, Civil Air Patrol, other stuff would probably help as well. Okay, uh, this comes from Carl. Questions on low-level training flights in Death Valley area, please. Dear Mr. Lemoyne, Firstly, my wife is a huge fan of yours. You've helped turn a simple Top Gun fangirl into a budding military aviation nerd, and for that, I thank you. During the weekend after Thanksgiving, we were overlanding at the Eureka Dunes in Death Valley National Park, and we were delighted 10 to 15 low-level flybys by F-15s, F-16s, F-18s, and T-38, and even a twin Beechcraft. School bus, I would presume. Here's some video for you. He's got a YouTube link. Said wife had lots of questions, and if you don't mind, I'd like to relay some on, some on to you. Okay. Have you ever flown or trained in that area or through Star Wars Canyon? If so, what was it like? No, I personally have not. I've always wanted to do Star Wars Canyon, but I've never had that opportunity. What minimum AGL restrictions would likely be on training flights we saw? Look like 
looked like they were very low down around 200 feet or so as best we can guess from shadows and wingspans depends uh typically air force is 500 feet uh or a thousand feet depending on if you're dual if you uh, you're uh if you're solo or you're a two ship um and what your qualifications are they can go down to 100 feet uh, depending on their quals uh, the low altitude step down training the Navy was 200 feet when I flew, so that's as low as you could get, um, 200 feet AGL. Uh, is there any centralized air traffic control or aircraft announcement frequency for the areas of flights from Lemoore, China Lake, Nellis don't get tangled up with each other during low-level runs? Yes, not an air traffic control, so center will control you entering the low-level route structure, and then you make uh, reporting, and there's, so the low-level itself uh, we'll have a, a radio frequency where you make the announcement that you're entering the low level for however long. And then uh, sometimes they may have reporting points where you have to announce when you're hitting that point. But uh, that's usually for low level. When we're in airspace, uh, sometimes there's mission control. Um, for example, when I go fly at Eglin, Eglin missions, they control the overwater ranges and the overwater airspace. We check in with them and then we deconflict amongst ourselves. Uh, thanks, Carl. P.S. That interview with shoes was absolutely excellent. Yeah, that's one of 2020, I think, for sure. Thank you for the email, Carl. And uh, I hope your wife still remains a fangirl. This comes from Chris. Chris says, my name is Chris. I'm a former Marine Sergeant Infantryman. I'm an OIF and OIEF veteran with 10 years in service before being medically retired. I recently found your YouTube channel and have been watching virtually all of your videos as time allows. And I must say it's such a great distraction from all the political stuff that's been happening in our world lately. No kidding. I really do feel that I miss my calling as being a fighter pilot. This is my lifelong dream as a, as a kid. I even went to college for a mechanical engineering degree to pursue that path. Somewhere I got distracted by work and life circumstances and decided to give up on my dream of being a pilot and join the Marine, Marine Corps as an enlisted infantryman. With that being said, I'm still a huge airplane and helicopter enthusiast as I'm a, the grandson of a wild weasel. My grandfather flew F-105, F-86, F-4s during a four-year Navy cross-deck tour and retired as a Brigadier General, one of the last commanders of the last fighter squadron station at McClellan Air Force Base in Sacramento in the late 80s. One of my biggest regrets is not taking the time to sit down and either write a book about or make a docuseries about his experience flying in Korea and Vietnam. He was an amazing man. I miss him dearly. So that's, we have lost a lot with some of our uh, veterans. Uh, that's a good point. With all that being said, I have to say that your channel has been an inspiration has rekindled my love of airplanes. Unfortunately, due to some injuries sustained in combat in Afghanistan, I have pins in my back and hips. That precluded me from rejoining the military and flying, so I'm now a successful small business owner. Awesome. I like your interview with T-Bear the most. Next time you talk to him, please give him a big Semper Fi from the boys in 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, as we had a couple of times where the A-10 pulled us out of some pretty good scrap. And for any future interview ideas, I think it'd be awesome if you could interview a marine aviator, hopefully a Harrier or Osprey pilot, as both those are pretty unique aircraft. It'll be interesting to hear their stories. Thank you for all you do. Keep up the great content. I look forward to some more awesome interviews. Simplify Sergeant. Uh, I won't do his last name just for OPSEC. There's a pick as Lav AT at 29 Palms. That's awesome. Thanks, Chris. Uh, have had special on the channel. He was my uh, token Marine, but we'll try to get some more Marines on the channel. Absolutely. We'll have uh, more A-10 guys, too. Got a couple more A-10 guys coming. Well, if you want to send me something, uh, CW Le Moyne at CWLemoyne.com. If you just want it to come to me, if you want me to read it on the Mover Mailbag, MoverMailbag at CWLemoyne.com. And if you want to mail me something, uh, P.O. Box 8594, Mandeville, Louisiana, 70470. All I ask is that you shoot me an email at cwdemoyne, cwdemoyne.com. Just let me know it's on its way or to look for it or when it arrives because sometimes I don't check it um, every week or anything like that. So um, sometimes I won't get a notification and then post office has no idea where, where the package went. So uh, in order to avoid that, just please let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Mover Mailbag coming up on the channel. Um, I've got a close air support video uh, in the F-18. I'll do some uh, narration on Hot Shots, Mover Ruins movies. I'm going to film soon, so no promises on when. Even after I film it, it could take 30 to 60 days, depending on how YouTube's copyright content ID uh, stuff happens. Also, check out my new channel, Life with Mover. Uh, which we'll start having videos here next week. Uh, that should be a good time uh, for everything non-aviation related. So if you missed the uh, Monday's thing, uh, this channel will now be aviation only.
Uh, so DCS, Microsoft Flight Sim, real aircraft, general aviation, um, flying, uh, military flying, uh, airline flying, anything aviation related would be on this channel and everything else that I used to do, cars, guns, vlogs, dogs, um, and even um, law enforcement and writing will be on the other channel. So check that out. And that'll be all the gaming stuff that's non-aviation like a LSPDFR will be on that channel as well. So anyway, happy new year. I hope your 2021 is doing great. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Excuse me, no, no. Fly with the doors off. All fox Don't be a douche. That's rule number one. Make them tell you now.